these were heavy hitters, not only heavy hitters in the life, but heavy hitters at a time where the mob was super strong. So tell us a little bit about like that kind of era, the 80s, part of the 90s. How was the Sweet 16? How was hanging out with Karen and, and the crew that I, that I know? Um, I, mean, some, I, I obviously don't know who Karen's father was. And at the end of the day, I, I sit back and I think about it. We were the crazy ones because we had no care <laughs> in the world. We were still sneaking out of his home. We almost one night got shot by Sammy because we were coming in from sneaking out and he was behind the door with the gun. Um, we learned later on that the FBI was, which is not a nice thing either, was watching us sneak out, climb off roofs where we could have been killed and just letting it roll. Not even to say 911, there's girls exactly. climbing out. Yeah. Okay. Shows you sometimes that they don't give a fuck. Yeah. So uh, long story short, you know, um, I never, it was just about Every time we hit, you know, the best 4th of July party. So it was nothing yeah. that I personally saw that was all about ego. Later on, we did start knowing that, you know, who John Gotti was. But, yeah. you know, Karen, too, it wasn't like her father was letting her live a very um, flamboyant life. You know, she yeah. did go to an excellent school. Later on, she did. We got her to come to our school. Yeah. But it wasn't like, you know, per se, sometimes you see things in a movie. And that was my, you know, statement before whatever this circle or whatever you want to label as families or mobsters, everybody ran a different household. So whatever you did with the circle of men didn't mean that your household had had the same code. You know, for example, maybe Victoria Gotti had like, you know, lavish this and lavish that or gaudy, yeah. whatever you want to describe it as. Karen lived a very humble life. Her mom, very humble person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Karen had to get a job. We both worked. It wasn't like, you know, our father said here, you know, go you could go get whatever you wanted we still had beautiful homes and you know great gifts but we still worked yeah. it wasn't like you know things that maybe like you see in these movies like godfather yeah. with the uh, you know sister and she was a spoiled brat and she never yeah. worked that wasn't yeah. us that wasn't work, us work, work. we actually when we did go out we didn't want to know who we were because we didn't want what we were doing is per se sneaking out or we didn't want to get special treatment yeah we didn't you know, we, even to this day we were like we were so stupid we were like so anti people paying for us we're like now nah, we're gonna go into this and we're not gonna say anything so you know it was different you know different strokes different folks so you had some like some like important pivot points in your life right obviously when your grandfather got taken away 16 he passed um and then you know when sammy turned i remember you know karen like no, he got passed when i was 16 i got to see him when i was 16 yeah. no, seriously i'm sorry how old were, yeah. how old was he how old were you when he, when he passed I believe it was like 23. Oh, wow. Okay. So a little bit old. Okay. Yeah. So, and then also like you were close to Karen and that whole crew when like, I remember Karen was even like when Sammy flipped, it was like, they were at a dodge. Like what happened from your perspective? Like, did you have to say bye? I know you're still good friends. How did you reconnect? Cause you guys are great friends. That's what I love about you guys. Well, but like, Karen, you know, we're not blood related and I could still I could call her my cousin. And at yeah. the end of the day, like a lot of people have problems with that, but I'm a true believer in, regardless of whatever her father or father didn't do, that has nothing to do with her. That's like me holding me accountable for things that my father has done or my grandfather. I believe everybody's their own person. So, you know, our relationship never took a, a turn for the worse. If anything, it kind of made our bond, I think, grow even tighter because she really at that time, and she says it in her book, you know, she, she had a question who her friends were because yeah. people were very cautious about being around her. And because, not because, you know, also too, was something going to, were they going to try to do something to her? And if I was, you know, if the person, you know, if somebody was going to be in her presence, were you going to be, you know, victim of what was going to take place? Yeah. But like yeah. I said, when it was said and done, only problem, not problem that I had with Karen was never a problem. The only heartbreak that, that took place is when she moved to Arizona, you know, seeing her go into, into that yeah. U-Haul and driving away. Yeah. But that was something she had to do to, you know, start a different life because New York was kind of like a black cloud. Well, now it's time to New York for her too. Yeah. Yeah. Now she's back. She's different. She's older, and she can handle her own. But she had a lot on her plate at a young girl. Yeah. So I think Arizona, especially after visiting there, beautiful state. Yeah. Great, you know, great food, great atmosphere. It was probably the best decision for all of them. You know, and uh, that was probably the, the biggest heartache that I had when she left, but. Anything else, my heart broke for her for what took place. Yeah. You know, it was a lot of scrutiny, a lot of, 
you know, hardship she had to deal with. Sometimes she spoke about it. Sometimes she didn't, you know, but it was just part of the path that God created 